Tony, this is SV to Badger. We're building a cruising sailboat. It's a, a J. Benford designed uh, sailing dory, 32 foot long, basically speaking. And uh, this is the record of the build of that boat. However, we're here in the workshop, not a boat in sight. <laughs> but I've spent a lot of, lot of time this week in the workshop. And as you may see, it's kind of morphed from what is basically a woodwork shop into a metal workshop this week. And we're working on this, which is very, very exciting. It's the start of the ballast keel. And from what you may see may, may give a bit of the game away what I'm planning. I'm welding up this steel box. It's five millimeter thick steel plate. Um, and it's the size of the ballast keel and will indeed be the ballast kill. And the plan is to fill this, well, there'll be some intermediary plates in here to stop it spreading, but to fill it with the lead ballast. Kill bolts coming out, protruding out of it, obviously. The plates that stop the spread will also act as fixings or, yeah, act as fixings for the kill bolts. And then we'll be filling it with lead. And this allows me to melt the lead in batches, which is something that I'm, particularly more comfortable with, you know, I've watched Acorn to Arabella and, you know, respect their achievement there. I've watched Doug on Seeker. I've watched Leo and his issue that he had with melting lead. I've watched various other YouTube channels of, of people casting lead to lead keels. And for me, particularly considering it here, we're here, we're in a residential area, it's not an industrial site here. For me, Melting the lead in batches is, is just much more comfortable, it's much more handleable, it's something I can do safely without concerns. And that's the reasons for this decision. So it'll be filled up with lead, it'll give us the 1.3 tonnes of ballast that we need, I say with the bolts protruding out to fix it on through the floors of the boat. Um, the steel box itself will remain, and will be treated like as though it were a steel boat. We'll put a couple of zinc anodes on the outside. She'll be epoxy sealed completely on the outside, treated as exactly as though it were a steel boat. It should give it a, a good lifespan. And there we go. So let's have a look. Just burnt out my trusty Metabo angle grinder. And this is all I had in the shop 
Craftronic. Goes with confidence, but at least it wasn't very expensive.
So I'm welding with this, with this, I've shown you it before, with this little IPO tools inverter welder, stick welding. And uh, it's brilliant. It gives you a really good quality weld. It's easy. It's got the, got the what do you call it, soft start or something it's called, isn't it? Uh, so it's really, really easy to use. And a great little welder, I, I thoroughly recommend. And coming on well, I think. I bought some of these rubber blocks, a uh, good large solid rubber block because I had a couple of little bits around the, the washboard, the sliding hatch of the washboard, a couple of little gaps that I wanted to block up and I just had this idea that a piece of rubber fitted in there, solid rubber, you know, not a flexible rubber, solid rubber fitted in there would be good. I thought I'd try it as an experiment. Well, they come, they've got this pattern on the front and I wanted to just experiment really with the machine in it. And I just planed that off with the, with the Bosch rechargeable, you know, cordless planer. And it planed off beautifully, absolutely beautifully. And then cut this to size on the table saw and uh, marked it out and cut it then to final shape with the Japanese hand saw. And uh, it works really well, really easily. Works like wood, basically. I sanded it with, with the sander to get the finish, drilled and count the sunk it so, to fix it. And uh, they've come out really well. Down below, obviously, on a chilly morning. <laughs> and Karen's been busy. She's hand sewed all the ends of our cushions, the saloon cushions, the five saloon cushions. She sat there, sewed them, come out absolutely beautifully. It's tightened the cloth up that little bit extra onto the onto the foam. Love the quality of this foam, it's good dense foam foam. And that's brightened the place up. I love the love the colour, you know, it's blue, it's obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps not the most adventurous colour in the world, but but I think it works really nicely with the wood and, and white panelling, and I'm happy. We we'll get on to we're going to do the quarter berth next, and then move on to the to the V berth. Lastly, I won't feel very much. Things go wrong. 
And that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, all that YouTube stuff, you know. Um, even better, please hit that subscribe button. We've got a Patreon thing going on. Uh, there are some videos over there on the Patreon page, um, which are accessible to all, but, um, you know, a few other thoughts and background details and whatever behind the build. And uh, there, are, what are there? there are actually four tiers of patrons from as little as $1 a month. If you feel like supporting this project, showing your appreciation, very much appreciated. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.